down. I'm your safety net. Yeah. If you fall down, you would better will catch you. He's your safety net. <laughs> and that is the most romantic scene. <laughs> as long as he doesn't. I, the thing is, like, I, I imagine those, you know, like, Atari. Does anybody play that Atari porn game where there's literally, like, the guy and he's, like, he, he's, like, moving across the bottom of the thing and he's got this big heart on. You've got to catch women that fall from the sky. <laughs> oh, right, 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 yeah. There like, were several versions of that. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's the one where you shoot, where you shoot your come uh, to the top and the women have to catch it with with, with their mouths or something. <laughs> no, no, it's the, it's, the, it's the one where the women are falling down from the top of the screen. You've got to, it's like hoops with women. abyssal layer of the radiophonic sea creatures debate the gravitational mass of a whale's dick because i took your choo-choo i'm going to be your host today and with me as always are two sick pricks who snicked my uncle rick's dick with a thick shiv toothpick and didn't give a shit is human metal and brack try saying that two times fast how are you human metal i won't even attempt to say it one time fast uh yeah uh <laughs> fine and all also don't you just love it when uh you like really, really, really try to come uh, up with something to talk about in one episode, and you got basically nothing. And then you're like, "Man, I'm gonna watch some movies and play some games, so I got something to talk about next week." And then the whole world to decide, <laughs> whole world decides, like, "Well, let's make this a news week and just dump a shit ton of news on your ass." And yeah, that's basically what happened this week. So uh, let's get in that while we are still young and. Uh, Full of uh, juices. Uh, <laughs> I suddenly feel unwell. <laughs> it's gonna get worse. So, uh, one of the bigger news for Comic Nerds this week was um, a certain spectacular wall caller is actually joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Spider Man is coming into the whole Avengers shenanigans after all. A Sony shifted parts of their rights to Marvel. So Marvel gets revenue and stuff from, uh, the crossover movie, movies that Spider Man appears in. But they're also gonna like, um, produce or at least create a new single, uh, solo movie and, uh, Sony gets the revenue from that. So that's how they made it work apparently. So yeah, um, I don't know what you guys think about that. Like, uh, are you kind of hype that Spider-Man is uh, appearing in the uh, in the Marvel Cine- uh, Cinematic Universe now, or you know, are you worried about the whole thing? Oh, I'm not worried. I'm pretty hyped, especially for like Spider-Man appearing in like the Civil War, get to make a Civil War movie. Mm-hmm. This is going to be great. The only thing I felt like when reading it, I felt like sad for Andrew Garfield, Andrew Garfield, and like Mark Webb. I just imagined them sitting like side by side or like somewhere and just crying because they're probably not going to return for the next Spider-Man movies. Uh, they're gonna, probably going to pick a new Spider-Man. Yeah. And I don't even think it's Andrew Garfield's fault that like the Spider-Man, last few Spider-Man movies kind of sucked. No. It was actually like the best part about no. it. Yeah, it's definitely not his fault. Not at all. It's the writing uh, and uh, yeah, that's mostly the writing, yes. <laughs> yeah, mostly the writing. I think, yeah, well, I'm absolutely with you guys. I think Andrew Garfield was a fine Spider-Man, but uh, the, the Spider-Man movies just sucked. But I think, you know, Marvel's on a hot streak uh, as of, you know, recent times. So I think it's a very sensible move by, by Sony to, to let Marvel, you know, have a stab at uh, taking back their, their own property and doing something great with it. Because I think we're all excited about the potential of a Spider-Man movie made by Marvel. Um, of course, it's going to have a third act where everything explodes and fucking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also... Oh. Yeah, really, that's what's gonna happen, yeah. I really, really hope that they don't do another origin story, like another <laughs> oh, version of that, <laughs> for the third fucking time. Yeah. I mean, he's gonna be introduced in one of the crossover movies first. I think, uh, like you said, it's gonna be the Captain America Civil War movie where he appears first. At least that's what the plan uh, I- is. That's why several of the other movie projects by Marvel have been sh- like pushed back, so there's room to establish Spider-Man in, in the new universe. So I hope that he is introduced in a crossover movie first that bodes well for the fact that in his solo movie we don't get another origin story except for maybe a five minute flashback or something. Uh, what I actually hope is that uh, in like the next like Marvel movie, Spider-Man just appears and none of the effects know where he was. It's like, guys, 
I've been there for like five years. <laughs> uh, you've seen this, have you seen the newspaper? I've like, I've worked in New York for like the last ten years, like, cleaning up Why the didn't fire. you help us fight the fucking aliens? <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. <laughs> Or you have like a flashback, like you see like Thor fighting the aliens or the Hulk fighting the aliens. You see around the corner and it's like Spider-Man beating up some ducks <laughs> at the same time. Maybe maybe the Avengers are all assholes. They know he's there. They're just completely ignoring him. Like, yeah. like uh, welcome to the Avengers. Everybody's welcome to the Avengers. Except that fucking asshole spider dude. Dude, that fucking guy winds me yeah. up. Dude in this red and, and blue spandex. Dude, what the fuck is he? <laughs> you should just see like <laughs> Spider-Man trying to call Tony Stark and he's just like, hey, it's it's spider up. Uh, <laughs> like hanging up the phone. Dude, like, dude, dude. Like, dude. <laughs> Also, people are speculating if you know um, the new Ultimate Spider-Man, Mike Miles Morales, uh, will be might be the new one. And uh, I think it would be cool, but I doubt that it. would be cool. I doubt it too because Marvel is playing it incredibly safe when it comes to their main properties, and just I think Miles Morales is just too much of an unknown quantity right now, and uh, they they're probably gonna use Peter again. Though, like I said, I would like to see Miles because it was uh, it would spice things up, and they. Stated, I think that they're bringing it back to high school, so there is a possibility to, you know, actually make it happen. I either want to see a grown-up Peter Parker, who is at well beyond college or something, or I want to see, if they go back to high school again, I want to see Miles Morales just, you know, to make it different and shit like that. So, yeah, let's see what they do with it. I got my hope, hope ups that they will deli- uh, deliver at least something better than Sony did with the past two movies. And, uh, yeah, or the past three, actually. Uh, so, uh, uh, the next thing I got on the list, Netflix announced that they have serious, a TV show in production or, you know, an early concept stage, um, for The Legend of Zelda, live action TV show. Uh, so how about that? I did not expect this to happen at all. That came completely out of field. I was just sitting at my screen looking at Twitter. I was like, what? <laughs> What the fuck? And then I read the description on, on Polygon or something where they were like uh, describing the basic outline of where they want to go with the show. And the thing I read that just boggled my mind was, oh, we want to do it like Game of Thrones, but for the whole family. And I was like, so not like Game of Thrones. Hey, hey, I have seen some of the seats in Game of Thrones. They have fun for the whole family. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we basically get rid of all the rape, of all the violence, the death, and everything. Uh, <laughs> so wait, what's left? Oh yeah, okay, we got some, maybe some strong character interaction there. Let's hope they, you know, get actually some good writers in there. But yeah, I have no idea uh, if they can make this work. I think, I mean, Netflix has shown uh, that they, you know, can make interesting series. Like uh, they, they got some good stuff on their roster right now. So I don't doubt they will try. And but I heard Marco Polo was kind of Marco Polo is kind of meh, yeah. And I think uh, there's Marco Polo is a good example actually. There is a lot of that series cannot decide where it wants to go. That's it already start, feels it, like that's their series they want to make Game of Thrones out of. Yeah, and it exactly. Just didn't work. Exactly, it's like they try to make it like this kind of semi-accurate history stuff, and then they go like balls to the walls, insane with the fight scenes and everything, and change stuff up so much that it makes no sense whatsoever in context with the uh, uh, historical, you know, uh, you know, actual things that happened. <laughs> so I have no idea. I mean, they don't have to do that with Legend of Zelda because it's overall f- fictional in general. But I don't, I don't actually know how they. What do you guys think? How how they could how how could they make this work actually? Well, how could I, they make this? Uh, how show? could they make it work? I, I I don't have an answer for that, but I can tell you they got an uphill struggle because uh, looking back, it's not the first time that people have tried to uh, make media that is either based on Zelda or similar to Zelda. Um, specifically, I don't know if any of you remember like the the horrendous anime that was on, on TV <laughs> back in the eighties. Oh Jesus, that was the Legend of Zelda cartoon was just an awful yeah. fucking. Excuse me, princess. Actually, that's yeah. the first that came to mind when I read that news. That I basically said that out loud. It's like, yeah. what? Excuse me, princess. What? 
Legend of Zelda series. <laughs> yeah, that that was awful. That was an awful animation, definitely. Um, and also added to that, I don't know if you guys saw the Tom Cruise movie Legend, which was basically Zelda the movie. It even had like an annoying fairy, and uh, the the You're demon right. was Tim Curry is the devil, and he basically wore like a green suit with yeah, like you know, with the sword and shield and adventuring, or you know, into the dungeons with dwarfs. That was basically Zelda the movie, or, or as close as you can get to Zelda the movie. And I never saw that, but you're totally right. You're totally right. Holy shit, you just blew my mind. Mm-hmm. And it was what fucking fuck? awful. It was awful. Yeah, uh, I have seen it, so well, I, don't know. I like Tim Curry's makeup. Oh, yeah, it yeah, was... no, no. Tim Curry was the... There was one great thing about that movie, and it was Tim Curry. His performance, yeah, was, his makeup. Saving grace. It was amazing. Also, always forget that this is a Ridley Scott movie. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I've was... never seen it. You just, like, <laughs> totally oh. out of his ballpark for it's some... Ca- it can be much worse than, than Roman Hood, right? Come no, on. It's, no, no, it's more entertaining, in my opinion. I love Ridley Scott. I really do. He's one of my favorite directors. And um, I actually liked Legend quite a bit when I was a kid, uh, specifically its soundtrack. And then I so I decided to get it on Blu-ray. I'm, I mean, historically, it's a film that Ridley Scott likes to try and forget and sweep under the rug. It's one of the <laughs> it's one of those like widely despised movies. And I got it on Blu-ray when it was kind of like re-released quietly uh, uh, a few years ago. And I watched it and, oh, fuck me. Yeah, that's bad. That's all awful so it's awful doesn't it have like two two different soundtrack versions it does yeah because like the the one the one the synth pop was the was the really great one but um it, yeah. that's really hard that unfortunately that's the one that's really hard to come by uh these days probably only released on VH, uh, vhs or something yeah. so what you guys on uh, i'm done what do you guys have on the docket this week i have two things one is the hitman trailer which is ridiculous <laughs> It just looks like they've just picked the born identity and made it way more over the top. But like the main character, instead of being like a human, it's just a Terminator. Terminator, yeah. <laughs> uh, I wish they just took some of like the cr- ridiculous, crazy, over the top stuff from like the Hitman Absolution game, which is was just like, which felt like a Tarantino movie almost. It felt like Kill Bill with how over the top it was. I wish it was more like this, but, but uh, like that. But right now, it looks kind of bland. But maybe some good action scenes. Yeah, next up on my list is The Nick, which is uh, uh, a series that has, like, the first season has ended pretty little while ago. I haven't finished it yet. I'm, like, at episode eight or seven, and it's, like, ten episodes. But this is the the series starring Clive yeah. Owen with an yeah. amazing mustache, by the way. That's just a bonus. But, uh, and he is, like, the main doctor in a Knickerbocker hospital in, like, the early 1900s. And they're like a hospital that's on the, the verge of like discovering better ways to like do like doctor stuff. They're trying to overcome like the limitations of like the current medical understanding. So they have like a lot of like the new stuff in there. And there's like a, a entire episode where they for have like electricity for the first time in their, in their hospital. But this is a pretty, really great series. The entire series is directed by Steven Soderbergh. Oh, so you you might recognize that name, and Clive Owen is really good, even though there's some cliche stuff in there for like recent television series because, of course, he's also a drug addict. Like and that's something mm. that's just kind of the way of making Sherlock Holmes modern, modern characters like in like TV shows more edgy by making like they have a dark secret. He's a drug addict or one of those things. <laughs> uh, it's kind of weird that it's like. But just that's just what happens, and also the soundtrack. It's is funny just, how they how they never make the dark secret that he's a super heavy pedophile. <laughs> yeah, I think that's too edgy. <laughs> <laughs> Watch Netflix or HBO do, uh, HBO do it in the next season because they can't come up with anything more shocking. Yeah. It probably might happen in Game of Thrones some, at some point though. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, it's God. the character you've liked throughout like all the seasons. Yeah. It happens to be like a, like if that dark of a secret. Tyrion Lannister, oh, yeah. come and play with me. I'm oh, a kid. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's going to be horrible. And the fans will will kill every HBO employee, uh, employee ever. Yeah. So I guess it, it's my turn to go. And of course, of course, last week I promised the audience that I would talk about Alien Isolation. And the Choo Choo always keeps his promises. So here we go. Alien Isolation is a popular video game released for PlayStation 4, developed by Creative Assembly and uh, published by Sega. More on that next week. So, um, <laughs> so and with that, <laughs> we're going to move, 
det har inte tjäna i sin internet. Det Welcome back to the depth. So yes, love is in the air. Valentine's Day was just recently, so what better time to talk about our most romantic movies, or our favorite romantic movies. And we're not going to be talking about my sex tape. Uh, that's off the table. So, yeah, we're going to jump in straight off with the... Actually, it was on the table. At least that's what your wife told me. <laughs> yeah, and um, it, was, it, was, it was really sad for her, because she wasn't even in it, but... Um... <laughs> 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 so um yeah we're gonna jump in straight with the with the first uh romantic movie on our list so human metal um i know you're a romantic so what's your uh pick for romantic movie well no foreplay you're just gonna drop it straight yeah that's what he does all the time also whoever told you that i'm a romantic soul is a big fat liar uh <laughs> hey hey I, I, I just hey I, I myth busters okay I'm all about the foreplay all about the foreplay I mean if there's less than four women I'm just not interested well interesting uh but yeah uh quick a, a quick preface here I'm generally not that interested in romantic movies with the romance being the actual main hook because the, those movies tend to tread the same cliche ground all the time even more so than comic book movies just without all the cool stuff you know or I've watched too many anime because the romance plot in those are horrible and uh, yeah forced upon you even but <laughs> one of the- <laughs> with tentacles <laughs> yeah exactly. oh, come on also um, but one of my uh, one of my most favorite movies uh, romantic movies and movies I liked in general I've seen quite a while is um, Her by Joe's movie when Joaquin Phoenix and Scarlett Johansson as the computer and uh, yeah it's I like it a lot because it's so just different. It's just a super interesting concept. The whole idea of a human falling in love with the machine, this super advanced computer. I mean, it's concept is it has been explored before, but not to such an extent as it being the main plot and never with such a contemporary exposition about, you know, the state of humankind and everything. And the movie does that a lot and it's super interesting and has a lot of subtext to it. There's so much, so much subtext in this movie about how we treat, you know, lovers, friends or just other people in general, you know, what unreasonable expectations we have of others and they of us, you know, or how we can fuck up the most basic communications because of a variety of reasons or, you know, who we are. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It uh, merits several rewatchings, which I need to do in the not so distant future because I still don't really know what to make of the ending. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the movie for me just, uh, the theme is really interesting. The movie has a very nice melancholic atmosphere to it. The soundtrack does its part in that, uh, to advance that. And yeah, I, uh, I, I really like it and I have no idea what Chuchu is laughing at the moment, but maybe he wants to, uh, explain that to us. So, uh, what did, what did you think of her? Well, uh, of her? I, I thought it was an amazing movie, but I think it was always destined to be your favorite movie, Human Metal, ever since your mother caught you sticking uh-huh. your dick into the Famicom. <laughs> <laughs> that never happened. That is a blatant lie. <laughs> At least you cannot prove it. There is no uh, evidence. Well, it all ended badly because you know the old, the old, the old, you know the flip, the flip lid that the old Famicom used to have. You know, your mother came in, just slammed that down, and like that's why oh, he doesn't okay. have a girlfriend because he literally has no dick. Cause that, got... that that flip lid. That's would true. Have... This guy has no dick. <laughs> that flip lid would have broken on my dick. <laughs> there Honest. you go from the from the horse's mouth. No, her was um an amazing. An amazing movie. Yeah, it, it really was great fun. Um, but I think more, I think the romantic aspect of it was, um, yeah, I think it was fun. Uh, it was, it was fun, intellectual fun, you know, yeah. you know, okay. not, okay, not, not all fun needs to be, oh, yeah, oh, this is very, oh, you know, like, you know, fun was, can be was, had in many different forms. I mean, okay. Arrow is fun, but, you know, it's kind of slightly depressing dark fun, isn't it? But <laughs> it's like, um, you know, like, but her was was very intellectually stimulating and and yeah was a, was a fun movie i think the romance in the film was was okay and i mean it touched on a lot of kind of realistic relationship issues definitely um issues that are familiar to to people who have been um 
in a relationship. So I don't know quite how it appeals to you, Human Metal, but um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> go on. <laughs> but yeah, I think the uh, more than the the, uh, the the relationship aspect of her was was the uh, the kind of the thought provoking meditations on technology and you know like uh, how we become attached to our devices and it takes away from actual proper human connection and just yeah. uh, a kind of you know a glimpse of where potentially technology could wander off to in the future and plus it had a kind of whole slight undertone of um sci- sci-fi to it which 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 was uh, pretty well done so i think her was a great movie but i think the romantic aspect of it was probably the least uh, affecting portion you know the actual relationship between the computer and the guy i think it was the yeah, other I, stuff that that really made that movie quite special definitely i mean it explores the concept of romance in general like what it means to different people and stuff like that but that is not the most interesting part about the movie you're right i mean i just picked it because there are is romance stuff in there but it's yeah, not a like romantic it, movie as watched in like exactly <laughs> <laughs> or one I would say has romant, uh, romant, uh, overly romantic portions in it, or at least, ex- you know, like I said, explores the whole concept behind it. Uh, but I, what I like most about the um, the show is how uh, the show, uh, the movie is how it um, elaborates how w- we want someone else to be th- like the perfect partner for us so much uh, in certain cases that it like takes away from what they really are. And it's basically the, just a different version of ourselves and not really an, uh, an individual that stands on its own. And once that turns around, which happens in the movie, I mean, Joaquin's Phoenix character becomes kind of aggravated immediately and stuff like that. Once, once, uh, I forgot what was the name, uh, in that movie. Scarlett Johansson. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. yeah what well, what was the name of that? Uh, no, AI? I, no she idea. had a name. No, no. This yeah. is called Scarlett what, Johansson. Uh, Everybody else. Once does. she turns, <laughs> once she gets her own interests and, and that don't really cater to what, uh, what, uh, Joaquin Phoenix is interested in and just becomes her own character, he just doesn't accept her, uh, as much okay. anymore. And that's, or he has his problems with that, like. Well, yeah, you can totally understand that. I mean, um, if you've ever been in the situation, you know, you've had a girlfriend who, you know, and suddenly your girlfriend's telling you, oh, she wants to go and play pool with this guy, you know, that she's been friends yeah. with for a while. I mean, that's yeah. uh, that is a big fucking no-no. That's like, you know, <laughs> no no guy enjoys that time. So I can totally understand. I mean, it's a computer. So the, I think it's a little bit different, but it, it's still that, you know, those, he's in a relationship with his computer. So, you know, uh, a quick, uh, FYI for the, uh, for the, for the people out there. If your girlfriend says to you that she's going to go bowling with, uh, you know, a male friend of hers who she's had stimulating conversations with, let me tell you, that's not a good sign for your relationship. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Repressed like said, memories. There, repressed memories are, many, are coming to the fore. <laughs> disturbing. I'm gonna call the police. Uh, the, the, but like I said, there are many. Way out of you. Many good. Good job. There are many different angles in that movie that, uh, are, you know, w- that yeah, merit rewatch. They use many different angles, positions. Uh, <laughs> well, they, no. he'd have to. He'd, I mean, Not Fifty yeah. Shades of Grey. One position, he opened up the CD tray and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the worst one was where he did it through the through the fan. I mean that that's just got to hurt. Ooh, that's got to hurt. Yeah. Oh, he God. keeps. I keep getting electric shocks. <laughs> he's he's like, oh, there's electricity running between us, baby. There are yeah. sparks, <laughs> literally sparks. <laughs> You're making yeah. my hair stand on end. Literally. Fascin- fascinating, <laughs> intriguing movie. Despite all the, the kinky uh, human on, on computer action. So there you go. And I'm out. Goodbye. So, yeah. Right. Be- before Human Metal uh, runs off, uh, we're going to come on to the first question of the, the Radiophonic Secret. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and uh, that is going to be your most romantic mo- moment from, from a movie. So Human Metal being the non-romanticist upon us. 
They go first, okay. He, just, he wants no part of this, does Human Metal. I think you say anything, Human Metal is like the type of guy, you know, when, when anybody's kissing around, he just immediately starts moving away, like, and runs off into his bedroom and cries a bit. <laughs> I really give a shit. I'm super relaxed about everything like that. Yeah, he says that, but he's like the guy who's on the train and like a couple are kissing nearby and he just stands up and shouts, You fucking inconsiderate bastards! Some of us are lonely! Some of us are lonely! <laughs> I'm alone, but I am not lonely. That is a possibility yeah. too. As mm, I think that's even hard. That's hard. He's, he's a lone wolf looking for his Liam Neeson. Oh. I think I think that's hard for except for people who have always been in a relationship or something. So uh, I guess Liam Neeson and the wolves. That's what you call doggy style. Way too easy. Oh, oh man. Way too uh, easy. This is so bad. This is so bad. So okay, if you're gonna go with that, if you're gonna go with bestiality, I I can have uh, that most romantic scene because I chose that the last scene from from the movie Babe, <laughs> where the farmer looks down to the to that little rascal at the end of the movie and says, "That'll do, pig." You know, it runs so hard. <laughs> it's, it's so fucking romantic. You know, he, you know, he took Babe into his bedroom that night and showed it how to be a true pig. And now I've ruined that sweet little movie for everyone. You're welcome. And you brought this upon yourself. Uh, we have seen this I'm different out. version, I think. Well, at least we know that uh, we know what German like to do with their pigs. Uh, the pork has a whole different meaning there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so, I said I, I should have worked that pun into into that into my uh, answer there. I feel I feel an immense amount of regret now. So, what are you? What did you guys uh, choose as your most romantic scene? Yeah, I actually have like an actual legitimate answer. <laughs> I have one of the saddest moments in movie history as well, but also really romantic. And that's like from the opening of Up. And that's how the couple meet each other at a young age and they grow old together. Aww. And I thought that was like really sweet and romantic. Of course, it ends tra tragically, but during it, it only works. The tragic only works because the romance between those characters actually really felt real and it really worked i totally agree with you i i remember crying so hard during the opening scene of up uh that was an amazing montage uh just a perfect meditation on romance and life and loss and grief it's it was it was a phenomenal piece of uh filmmaking really great and totally was not captured again throughout the runtime of that film. <laughs> like, like, exactly. <laughs> like, the rest of the movie was kind of a letdown. Yeah, it was. I mean, I thought it was a really funny movie still, but yeah, it, it doesn't really recapture that moment. Uh, I mean, those talking dogs are always hilarious, but though, yeah. I mean, but basically, the but the, the, that opening scene is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> no, uh, human metal doesn't want them to talk. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't want them to spill his secrets. <laughs> <laughs> that'll do boy you've been a good dog today um you just keep barking on why does why the, you will i have to wonder why do you order so much peanut butter i don't even order peanut butter i've not eaten peanut butter in like ages that makes it even weirder that you order so much peanut butter <laughs> Are you are you are you looking through my mail orders? Yes. Maybe I sh maybe I should <laughs> stick a private investigator on you to uncover your dirty secrets. See, that's funny. You're gonna stick a private uh, investigator, right? Like, you've farmer. been sticking dogs on your privates. <laughs> See, I'm, I, I'm giving you all the grounds for good puns. You should be grateful. This episode shines because of uh, of my indiscretions. <laughs> <laughs> so um so i'm gonna go for my most romantic movie uh uh no not most romantic movie sorry the, the most romantic moment and uh actually i'm gonna go one step further and uh the best kiss in any movie ever my favorite kiss and that of course is the extremely romantic and fantastic kiss in drive in the elevator where obviously that's a uh, slight spoilers for drive i suppose where um you know there's that kind of repressed romance between the, the two main characters in Drive and then finally in that elevator uh, Ryan Gosling's character realizes that this is it this is the last chance he's probably ever going to get to to Mac this girl uh, that doesn't sound too romantic but uh, <laughs> it is in the movie so he takes that chance and he pulls her in close and finally gets in with her it's an amazing moment there's this this wonderful kind of really cathartic music 
you know, kind of starts up, it goes in the slow motion and kind of the electricity dims at that point um, in the elevator just randomly. It's just an amazing cinematic moment and completely romantic and excellent. And then, of course, two seconds later, he fucking crushes someone's skull underneath his fucking boot, which is absolutely fantastic. And then completely in one swipe destroys the relationship that he's, he's had with her up until that point and killed any romance like completely in that, that same moment. It's just a fantastic uh, moment of cinema. First of all, anything that comes out of your mouth is not, cannot be romantic. Second at all, <laughs> um, you've never seen me give head. Girls love my tongue. I'm glad I've never seen you get he uh, give head and get head. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's on a regular basis as well. Are you uh, saying you've never seen my sex tape that we were talking about? You've seriously got to download that. No, no, no. That's a, wa a waste of bandwidth, I assume. Oh, But that was it was. I thought it was just a copy of the video game Alone in the Dark, not the, <laughs> the movie. I am very rarely alone in the dark. Yeah, your cat is there, right? I mean, come on. Human Metal, that's your perverted dream, yes? But you keep your bestiality <laughs> to yourself. <laughs> it's like, oh, cats! I thought it was about dogs. <laughs> when when cats and came to his neighborhood, he was like, oh shit, cats. I gotta see that. Oh, this is not what I expected. You know, you know, dog people can't be cat people as well. Come on now, get your get your story straight. Also, going back to Drive, that scene you just mentioned, I totally forgot about it because apparently it didn't resonate with me at all. Uh, because I thought that the romance in that movie was horrible and incredibly forced. And also, the, 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 every, every time those two characters had a somewhat kind of dialogue, I cringed so hard because every time I was like, man, that's not how people talk. Not at all. That's like, what, these people are like, I know it's supposed to be a repressed room. It's like, they have these kind of repressed feelings, but I think that that whole scene in the elevator is not er earned at all. I know I stand, maybe stand alone with that, but I think it was like, well, okay. He kisses her. I get it. And see, I forgot completely uh, all about it. So that's how strong that scene worked for me. Like, not at all. The scene where he kicks the skull in. Yeah, that worked for me after that. Yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's okay. yeah, that was a strong scene. Well, But yeah, I, I have my gripes with several parts of the movie anyway. So uh, it's not just a romance. So uh, there we go. Uh, Ryan Gosling also gets head in that movie all over his shoes, though. <laughs> 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 that's the best joke of the podcast right there <laughs> well uh, firstly human metal that's because you have the heart of a shriveled prune um but no, no i i totally disagree with you i think the romance in drive was incredibly well done i do agree with you that of course the dialogue is uh, a bit stilted but it's not it's not really about the dialogue it's what's between the dialogue it's what's between the lines you know um Between the lines, you know, uh, everything the soundtrack tells you about, like the soundtrack basically says you what you have to think <laughs> every <laughs> time with with its lyrics. <laughs> those those read between the line moments. No, no, not those read between the line moments. But um, there are quite a lot of un there's quite a lot of unspoken thoughts, like things in the actors' performances that aren't spoken, you know, like uh, the eye contact mm -hmm. or their, their body gestures. Um, I think it's an incredibly deep deep feeling like a beautiful movie with these shocking moments of, of violence in it. I absolutely adore that film. Like that is truly one of my favorite films uh, of all time. And definitely one of the best films I've seen in the last 10 years, undoubtedly drive. Like, like I, I, I love it intensely. How about you, Brack? Where do you fall about, where do you fall on the, on the, on the uh, issue of drive? I kind of liked it, but I was really, uh, It was not what I expected because the trailer sold it as a completely different movie. They sold it as like a really like f a more realistic version of Fast and the Furious. That's what the trailer sold it as. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not kidding. Oh, that, yeah, yeah, that's not not appropriate. I, I, I had the same thing, you know. How when I watched it, I was like, how can they call a movie Drive that has like literally one car chase in it, and that's it. <laughs> and, it, and it started really tense. The opening car chase was amazing, but still, it it was a completely different movie than I expected. But uh, I like uh, the director's other work that I watched after Drive because I knew I didn't have to, didn't, shouldn't expect what happens in the trailers. I, <laughs> so I liked like Bronson and uh, is great, yeah. I, uh, as, his last movie. Uh, I liked as well, but I forgot the name. Also with Ryan Gosling in there. But only God forgives. Only God forgives. That's the one. I haven't seen that. 
most people dislike it a lot more than Drive, but I, I thought it was uh, pretty good. I just want to be clear on the that I don't hate Drive completely. There are a lot of things I like in this movie. I like the the suspense. It's a fucking amazing in the movie. I like the visuals. This this movie looks fantastic. Ooh, yeah. And and I like parts of the soundtrack when it's like not super like in your face about what that movie and what the director wants you to feel in that very moment there's because only, I hate when the movie is there's also, only uh, like, one so, song human medicine, bullshit at yeah, least yeah. three there's, there's, actually, there's, there's, there's that, that that real human being you know uh, the song that you're talking about although that, that plays one several them, points during the film them. Uh, what I'd like to say is that I'm going to make an other movie with uh, Ryan Gosling in it it's called Stare because that's what <laughs> Gosling does a lot in the movies, <laughs> yeah. staring at people. You wouldn't not have uh, staring Gosling contest with him because he's just so good at it. If, it. if he looked a bit grumpy, it would be the best example of resting bitch face. <laughs> or I don't know what the male version of that is called, but, but yeah, Ryan Gosling has kind of one expression. <laughs> in that movie, he's a, he's a good actor. In other movies too, like there's this mafia S movie, I forgot what the name of that was, he has the same expression in that as well. <laughs> And but that, that, was, that, that was a shitty movie also. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, whatever. Drive for me mixed thing, but there are a lot of good things in that movie, but also like a lot of stuff I don't like. So there you go. With that, I guess uh, we're going to come on to the uh, the next item on the show. So Brack, why don't you tell us what is your favorite uh, romantic movie? Uh, my favorite romantic movie is Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. That's the first movie I thought <laughs> of with that we had to talk about romantic movies. And probably the romance is not even my favorite part of it. But I think it feels really realistic for somebody his age and close to my age as well. Mm. Uh, I, I remember that. When I was his age, I totally remember beating the shit out of... Uh... <laughs> I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm just talking about like the, the awkwardness. Like, beating the shit out of your own meat. <laughs> so no, that's that's what you remember from when you were his age. What do you mean <laughs> when I was when I was his age? Yeah, actually, what are you talking about? He's probably younger than Michael Sarah actually is. So <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't age at all. He still he looks like fourteen for like yeah. most of his life. But yeah, I, I think it's 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 a kind of sweet coming of age story. Scott Pilgrim. If you take away like the awesome action and the awesome music and the awesome fight scenes and the hilarious lines from uh, the evil exes. Mm. It's still like a pretty basic romantic movie, but also a basic, like a really good, like coming of age story. So that's where the, the ways it connected with me as well. Outside of being like a geek, like heaven with mm. all their like references and all like the, the, the crazy stuff that's going on outside of that. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Um, Scott Pilgrim versus the world is. One of my, like Drive, one of my favorite films of all time. In fact, I, 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 if I was to make a list of like my top movies, that would be like, that would be first ballot choice for top five movies of all time for me personally. I, I adore that movie. I've watched it a, a, an insane amount of times. I just, I never tire of that film. It's, there's something about that, that kind of the directorial aspect that's really inventive on a directorial level. The way, you know, the scene transitions and stuff are so cleverly done. The music just totally relentlessly kicks ass. I mean, it's a soundtrack that as soon as I watch that movie, it's like, I, Fuck, I gotta have that soundtrack. And actually, I checked out most of the bands actually on that soundtrack and enjoyed quite a lot of their albums. Um, so, cause I'm, I'm like totally into indie and alt rock and that's... Yeah. Even the, even the original songs are actually kind of fun. We hate you, please die. <laughs> <laughs> that's an amazing song. That's probably, uh, uh, you would metal's most romantic song, I think, if you yeah. think a song is. <laughs> probably. That song is like three seconds long or something. And it's actually on yeah. the soundtrack, like three seconds long. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's like, ben -na 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 die! <laughs> or something like that. It's like Napalm Death. But like, the movie was just, it, it just totally kicked ass. Even the fight scenes were spectacularly, like, well done and really inventive. And the way that it had kind of, the kind of A-list celebrities, like, making fun of themselves as the, the seven evil boyfriends and, God damn, Jason Schwartzman is like the fucking god of cool at the end of that movie. He's fucking <laughs> badass, man. Yeah. Uh, actually, my favorite was Chris Evans because he's just so over the top hilarious. Like, that's the action. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was the guy who plays uh, the vegan guy. Amazing. But it's, it's super pretentious. Like, everything people hate about vegans, yeah. he just represents in like five minutes. It's amazing. Uh, Brent Routh, he's playing the, uh, the, the, uh, Roy Palmer in, in, uh, Arrow now. Also and, did Superman too. It was in, yeah. Uh, 
Superman, Superman Returns. Returns yeah. He was Superman. He didn't do Superman. Yeah. <laughs> that was the other. Uh... That's a different movie. That's a whole different movie. Oh, wow. Hey, that's got, how he got parts of his vegan powers. And now we're going to see the new shocking HBO Superman series where Superman gets raped. Um, so... <laughs> I wonder who's that, who would be able to pull that off. Probably only Darkseid. And then he, he gets, Superman gets pregnant. <laughs> what the it. fuck? <laughs> Exactly. Uh, yeah. Weird, weird Kryptonian physiology. Exactly. We should, yeah. should you, totally it seems you also have the read the script of uh, Batman vs Superman. I dare Zack Snyder to do that. <laughs> Batman vs <I> Superman. <laughs> no, whole different. <laughs> so uh, what uh, what do you guys think? Uh, what uh, what is Edgar Wright's strongest movie? Uh, Scott Pilgrim or Hot Fuzz? Scott Pilgrim. Uh, I me. think still Hot Fuzz for me. Oh, uh, we have a tie. Do I have to be the tiebreaker there? I can't because I like both those movies. It, and he's got a big <laughs> shot of the dead. So. Yeah. No, 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 no. He's going to no. pick Wells End. <sighs> it's got to be Hot Fuzz or Scott Pilgrim. Too. I guess I'd have to go with Scott Pilgrim because of all the nice nerd references in there. I guess just from a basic thematic standpoint, that movie appeals more to me. But I like uh, the characters in Hot Fuzz so much, so I don't know. Uh, yeah, and Scott Pilgrim. I mean, that's the point. Scott Pilgrim in in his movie is kind of a jerk, kind of an asshole, and I kind of hate him, as, except for when he got a turnaround. But that's his arc, so that's okay. I mean, that's the point. And yeah, I I, I like that movie really a lot. I like the fight scenes, music, everything, like, all the things you already you know uh, mentioned. Uh, I like them a lot, and I like the movie actually more than the comic books, the original comic books, which I've read after I've seen the movie. So maybe that plays into it, but. Uh, those are pretty different, at least towards the end. So uh, I like the way uh, I like what the movie did more than what the comic books did. But uh, yeah, just quickly, if if you were Scott Pilgrim, who would you choose? Knives Chow or or uh, Ramona Flowers? Uh, yeah, probably no, Knives as well. Knives because she's a nicer person. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with that. Of course, Knives. I'm all about the Asian yeah. beaver. Um. <laughs> yep. Uh. So you actually, you see him in have like an actual response. Oh yeah, it's because she's a nice person. You're like, yeah, she's Asian. Yes, that's and, awesome. and if we've, if, if we've learned anything from uh, Japanese porn, those beavers are very hairy. Well, actually, I'm a big fan of the hairy beaver. Um, yeah, I think you've said that before as well, to each their own. Yeah, but like, shaved beavers are weird. It's like when you see a shaved cat, like, you know, when you see hairless cats, like in Ghostbusters 2, it's just weird. There are some things that should just be hairy, and, and beavers are one of those things that should be hairy. I mean, <laughs> if you think so. So we're going to come on to the next question of the radiophonic sea creatures, which kind of fits the tone of what I was just talking about. Okay, so basically, let's play marry one, fuck one, kill one. A horrible oh, game. It's just a horrible <laughs> game. I feel, I feel already bad at playing it. Like, <laughs> this disgusting person. Oh, this is hilarious. So, basically... But women do it as well, so it's okay. So, yeah, any any female yeah. character... Which of the Avengers would you marry, kill, or bang? Oh. Yeah, yeah. That oh, happens. Man, hang on a minute. Uh, I, I would fuck Scarlett Johansson. I would marry... There's no more female Avengers. I'm shit out of luck. All right, I uh, would. I, I would. I would fuck Scarlett Johansson, marry Robert Downey of uh, Iron Man because he's rich, and kill. That's uh, America. <laughs> no, 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 no. Coulson. Because he's Coulson. easy to kill. Probably Hawkeye. No, I'd kill. You know I'd kill Bruce Banner because you know, like he's a danger to everybody when he holds up. <laughs> that side. Hey, let's get on to the point. Okay, so who would you? Yeah, marry one, fuck one. Kill one female characters from movies or games. Let's get it on. So, Human Metal, first up. So, um, fucking, I would fuck Edie from Mass Effect because she's a robot and can't get pregnant. So, <laughs> what is it? You, you already, <laughs> Chris, there's, a, there's a theme running here. His favorite romantic movie is her. I made a, I made a crack about him fucking his Famicom. Give me that sweet circuit love. He's gonna marry uh, uh, Babe from Babe. In no, 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 no. I'm gonna marry. Uh, you have already uh, kind of spoiled that, uh, Bragg. But I'm gonna marry Lara Croft, old school Lara Croft, not that homo oh, version. Oh shit! We have to not say not one. that homo version of Lara we have Croft. To say yes, one. See, see, I also because, have Lara Croft because she is thinking rich. And also, then I'd kill Lara Croft to get all her money and that giant ass house of hers. So. <laughs> Uh, also, also, as you know, Lara Croft is Angelina Jolie uh, in in the movies, and that woman is effing crazy. So if you don't kill her first, she's definitely gonna ask you eventually. So, yeah. sound advice there: kill her first, and uh, yeah, get that sweet money. 
that yeah, is, that's my choice. Break, you want to get on that because you you got some of the same choices there. I actually I have such a boring list now because I have bang Black Widow, marry Lara Croft, and kill Laurie from The Walking Dead because she's just the worst. She's just the worst. Well, she got eaten by zombies in the end, I guess. So there you go. Poor bastard. Choo choo, your, your choices. Wow. Uh, um. Okay. So, uh, marry who I would who would I marry? I would marry Samus from Metroid, especially Samus from Other M, simply because she's submissive, right? So she has that. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, come on. So you got the general who refuses to let her use powers and orders her around. So I'd be like Samus. It's time for you to take it in the brown hole. And she'd be like, I don't want to do that. And like, Samus, your refusing brown hole power has been rescinded. You can't use that yet. And like, <laughs> done. And let's face it, everybody wants to get under that zero suit. Um, yeah, so. But you, you're also kind of all, all in the metal, uh, into the metal ladies then, into the slightly computerized ladies there because. No, no, no. Take you this. Know, fuck, fuck Samus through her suit. We're getting back into your fantasies again. You and machines. <laughs> I know that's what appeals to you. <laughs> but, you know, App- apparently, judging people. from this episode, everything appeals to me. Computers, dogs, pigs. Apparently, <laughs> according to you guys, according to you guys, I have no specific preferences. I fuck everything. You're living the single geek life. What can I you say? You need to make up your minds. The most erotic moment that human metal ever had was when boba fett appeared on screen <laughs> okay then it's the suit <laughs> man when, when you got when you got thrown into the the sarlacc pit it was like oh okay yeah i see where this is going it's a giant vagina but uh yeah go on <laughs> Okay, so, so, marry, yes, Samus from, from Other M, cause, yeah, she'd be a nice wife, nice and submissive, submissive, yeah. and do, would do whatever I would tell her to do, as she does in Other M. And, uh, if that sounds sexist, play Other M, it's true. And, uh, I, but actually, to be honest, I don't like submissive women, I like women with a nice pair of fire in their bellies. Um, and something else in their bellies, but, um. Jesus not- Christ. Okay, so. Who I'd fuck? Um, everyone and anyone. Uh, no. Uh, so. Yes, okay. he does on a regular basis. As as I as I already said, I'm all about the Asian beaver. I love Asian beaver. Um, I gotta stop calling it beaver. So, but basically, I like Asian girls seriously. But uh, I think the last actress that actually made me stop in my tracks when I was watching a film and, and just like floor to jaw to the floor and think, oh shit, she's hot was um, in Oblivion, the movie Oblivion, uh, the Tom Cruise movie. That British girl with the ginger hair, uh, uh, her name is, uh, the actress name is Andrea Riseborough, and her character is Victoria Olsen. Um, Holy Jesus, nothing else to say, just, oh my fucking God, she is hot, so hot, want to touch the hiney. Ooh, yes. I'm getting all hot under the collar. Hiney, hiney, I would. I'm just saying, I would. <laughs> so <laughs> good to know. We, we'll forward that message to her. I've been forwarding you know, that message of, to her for months. Uh, uh, her lawyers have been forwarding messages to me, but I haven't read any of them. I assume did, 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 contact probably mailed your restraining order already. That's why I don't open those mails. If I don't see it, it doesn't exist. So, <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, how, how red traffic lights work. In Japan, apparently so. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's not that's not a joke. Seriously, if you think red light, okay, you're safe to cross the road. Uh-uh. Think again. Think again. I've been hit two times in ten years. Anyway, coming on to the last one, who would I kill? Okay, controversial. Dis- well, not really controversial, but fuck it. Rachel Dawes from Batman. I hate that bitch. She's a fucking annoying character. <laughs> like, Katie Holmes in Batman Begins. Ah, oh, just anytime I see Katie Holmes, I just want to punch her. Like, and I, yeah. just something about her attitude or something, her like really pompous, arrogant attitude just makes me want to punch her in the face. And in Batman Returns, she's definitely replaced by a better actress. But, um, you know, her decisions, the way that she's kind of seesawing between Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent, and the way that she totally goes back on her word, uh, you know, against what Bruce Wayne says and goes for Harvey Dent, and 
I don't know. There's just something about that wish-washy bitch that just makes me want to put a gun to her head and pull the trigger. I mean, if, if, you know, if I was Batman, you know, do you know that scene where she fires that taser at Batman and Batman like pulls it off and stuff and warns her about the DA? Like, I would have picked up that taser and tased her. We, we'll forward that message to her as well. Also the, to the police in your area. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, if anybody tases and kills, um, uh, Katie Holmes, I'm I'm first on the suspect list, yeah, definitely. And if I'm not on the suspect list, I'm gonna mail them a check in the post. Um, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, so there we are. Complete fucking nonsense. Welcome back to the uh, Radio Funny Sea Creatures. Radio Funny Sea Creatures. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so in a nutshell. Complete chaotic <laughs> nonsense. But that's why you tune in, and people admit it. The, those few of you who do actually. Yeah, the only podcast that plays fuck one, marry one, kill one on air. So anyway, we're, we're going to come on to the to, to the uh, last piece of media on the list, and that's going to be my favorite romantic movie, and that is going to be Alien. Oh, yes, that's exactly it. So you know, Alien is a metaphor for male rape. No, I'm joking. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> ah, I didn't want this. What male rape? I'm so sorry. Yeah, but if a pig snuck up behind you, you'd be fine with it. Um, so <laughs> he means an actual pig, not a cop, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Brack, stop Go it! On. You're gonna kill me. <sighs> so... <laughs> Why is this making me laugh so hard? I don't know. Uh... <laughs> I smell bacon. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh Jesus! So yes, my romantic, my favorite romantic movie is um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. An absolutely fucking fantastic movie. Uh, one of the most original romantic comedies. Hmm. Comedies in brackets. More of a drama, isn't it? Really. But um, romantic SF weird fucking crossover movie like it's it's an amazing piece of cinema completely unique and original there's nothing else like it before or since um charlie kaufman is just an amazing writer and it makes really weird original movies i mean as anyone who's seen adaptation will will attest eternal sunshine is just absolutely fucking brilliant it keeps you guessing at where it's going and the imagery in that movie is is beyond reproach i mean it's it's a phenomenal looking film uh there are many many small details in the visuals that you can only really pick up on like after watching it multiple multiple times I and mean, it took me several watches to realize that the scene where they're in the library the titles on the books are slowly disappearing um like one by one uh, and other things like that or the scene in the end where he's traveling back in the car he's actually buried in sand with bit with bits of fence post like surrounding him like there are many small details, visual details that you can you can only pick up in that movie after watching it a bunch of times. It's cinematically speaking, it's a wonderful film, and of co- of course, plot line. There, there's nothing quite like it. I mean, the guy wants to get an ex girlfriend out of his head, so goes to a company that decides to erase his memory, and then he goes into his own head, and then he gets his ass to Mars. So. No, sorry, different <laughs> uh, different machine. It's also a very romantic movie. <laughs> yes, there's nothing more romantic than uh, stabbing a guy through the throat with a fucking nine-inch nail. <laughs> so, but basically, yeah. And then he retreats into his own head and goes through all the all the different memories uh, from most recent to the first memory. And then on his way through his memories of of a kind of like tempestuous love affair, he rediscovers his love for for his girlfriend. And then wants to wants to call the process off, and then ends up just going on a mad ass adventure inside his own head, trying to stop it. And it's just a wonderfully brilliant, cathartic movie, and totally feels unforced in every way. Especially the ending, like, is wonderful and has a complete lack of schmaltz and you know typical romantic tropes. And it's just, I love everything about that movie. I've seen it multiple multiple times, and I, I just never tire of it. It's just a really uplifting movie that makes you feel so good about life and so good about love and romance it's it's, it's wonderful yeah so how about you guys what do you think about uh, eternal sunshine and the spotless mind uh, i watched it when i was probably too young to actually enjoy it 
I watched it when I was like 14, so it was not the right time for me to watch it, and then Oof. I just got it off after like 20 minutes. Yeah. I, I Now you've grown up a bit, Brack. You're at least 16 now. I recommend <laughs> <laughs> I recommend you go back and like re-watch that. Like, I, I can't even tell you how good that film is. It's it's absolutely incredible. Um, how about you, Human Metal? Uh, as you probably already expect, I have not seen that movie, but, you know, judging from your description, I'm probably going to watch it at some point because it sounds interesting. But, yeah, not seen it. Sounds cool. But I guess I guess just on paper, this, if I have ever read the summary about it, I was just not, you know, interested in it. Just uh, the base hook for it, maybe. The thing is, like, it's it's really romantic and well done, and there there were many wonderful visual cues in the film, many many wonderful special effects and scene transitions and stuff. So, for example, there's a wonderful scene where a kind of heartbreaking scene, minor spoiler, but where they're having like a heartbreaking conversation, basically saying goodbye for the last time, and around them the house that they're in is crumbling to pieces like an earthquake, piece by piece, like ceilings falling down, all the walls are like shredding to pieces and disappearing like and it, it's kind of a metaphor for for relationship breaking down as well it's 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 a fucking it's a fucking wonderful scene both from a from a special effects point and and a, and a dramatic standpoint they really use special effects really really well there or like that the, the scene where they're running through the train station and the people are just zapping into nothingness it it's it's a perfect blend of drama like human emotion and special effects done really, really well. And there's the, there's a very heavy sci-fi, no, not very heavy sci-fi tint, but there's a there's a tangible type sci-fi tint in there, you know, or, or of those kind of effects-driven set pieces that are amazing. But also there's moments of like sheer cathartic beauty. Like so, he wants to keep his the memory of his girlfriend safe. So the way he tries to do that at one point is retreating into a memory. That has nothing to do with anything romantic, like something, some other part of his memory where the the people who are trying to erase his memory aren't coming. So he, <clears throat> excuse me, he retreats into a memory of when he's a little kid, you know, tasting the rain on his tongue and like polishing the seat of his bicycle and stuff. And man, that moment combined with that imagery, that feeling and that rain, it gets me every time, man. I just tear up every single time that that complete innocence of children. It's a beautiful, beautiful moment. And just, you know, it reminds you of when you used to walk home from school, you know, splashing in the puddles on your way home from school and stuff. And like Brack was doing last week, basically. Um, it's, it's, just a, it's just an amazing moment. And from start to finish, there are many small moments like that and plus every everybody's great in it mark ruffalo is is amazing in the film as the hilariously clash obsessed um <laughs> engineer and tom wilkinson who's great in everything elijah wood is a fucking creepy ass kind of semi stalker in the film which is is great and jim carrey turns in a career best performance in that film there's no other jim carrey film where he he scores so high like then eternal sunshine of the spotless mind so both of you sons of bitches god damn it go back and watch that film hey but that's our opinion on romantic movies but um yeah what's your opinion oh valued listener uh, feel free to attack the comment section like a particularly tasty pair of edible panties and uh speaking of edible panties here's human metal with some blurb yeah, send questions or comments about the show to creaturepodcast at gmail.com and follow us on Twitter and YouTube for yeah, somewhat regular updates. And uh, with that, that brings us to the end of this week's visitation floor. And please join us next time. A barrel of crude oil tells you a sexist joke. Till then, this is the Radiophonic Sea Creatures tuning out.